on the tiny islands of Macau. A marvel of modern engineering is rising out of the sea. Macau was an opportunity we just couldn't pass up. The Venetian Macau will be the largest inhabited building on the planet, containing the largest casino in the world. It will be a city of the spectacular. Workers will face an almost impossible deadline. We're thinking, you want to open when? This is a construction story of epic proportions, bringing the glitz of Las Vegas to Macau and changing the future of high-stakes entertainment in Asia forever. Macau, China. Situated off the southeast coast of mainland China, Macau is just three small islands linked by 23 kilometers of man-made bridges. Since it was founded by the Portuguese in the 16th century, Macau has been an important base for traveling merchants. One of history's most vital and colorful centers of trade, it is a melting pot of cultures. A unique and quirky mixture of Portuguese legacy and Chinese tradition. Today, Macau is spawning a new tradition. One that generates more than 50% of its GDP and employs almost a third of Macau's population. China's new wealthy flock here, not for trade, but for casinos. Macau is the only place in China with legalized gaming. China's very own Sin City. And the race is on to capitalize on what will be the most lucrative gaming center in the world. Macau was an opportunity we just couldn't pass up. Sheldon Adelson is the chairman and CEO of the Las Vegas Sands Corporation and one of the world's richest men. After successfully transforming Las Vegas with his Venetian vision, Adelson's focus is now firmly fixed on Macau. I went to sleep that night, I woke up in the morning and I said, Eureka, I found it, that's the idea. Adelson's plan is to take his Las Vegas touch to China, and that means Macau. With nearly half the world's population within five hours flying time from Macau, it's all about potential. Adelson's vision is this, the Venetian Macau. Not just a casino, one of the largest resort complexes ever imagined multiple venues rolled into one. A concept he's called the integrated resort. Five shopping malls, about 30 restaurants. Let me see what else. Oh, showrooms, arena, exhibition space, ballrooms, a spa. I think that's about it. Oh, museums. Oh, I forgot to tell you. We have gaming, too. The Venetian Macau will be the largest inhabited building in the world. Nearly a million square meters of entertainment, accommodation, and services. There's nothing of this scale as a single phased resort development in the world. Buildings only half this size have taken upwards of five years to build. Sheldon Adelson wants the Venetian Macau built in less than three. Why the rush? Because the market's there. We want to bring the product to the market as quickly as possible. Um, every day is, is millions of dollars, literally. Each day the project's delayed will cost Adelson at least $3 million. 
That's just in construction here. costs alone. There's another phase of casino to go in here. Typhoons and subtropical rainfall will wreak havoc. The lack of local supplies is the biggest headache, as crucial resources need to be imported from nearby China in staggering quantities. With the entire structure themed to look like Venice, teams of local artists have to bring the style and ambience of 15th century Italy to the bustling shores of modern China. I'd look at the schedules, I'd look at the clock, I'd look at the calendar, and go, no way. They're just, we're just never going to make it. But before any ground can be broken and construction begin, they need to find the land. The challenge in congested Macau is that there simply isn't anywhere to build the mammoth Venetian. Turning five square kilometers of sea into land seems to be the only option. There's some early footage we took of the site before we started and we're just standing there looking across a, at reeds and marshes. It's, it's quite incredible. Adelson cannot afford setbacks on one of the largest construction projects ever attempted. Don't, don't this over there. Yeah, we'll yeah, this over there. there. But if you think that money alone can make problems disappear, think again. If you're going to come and do this sort of job and you're going to expect everything to run perfectly, sorry, you are in the wrong world. <laughs> Frank McGoldrick is the Hong Kong managing director at international architectural firm, ADIS. For Frank and his team, it's not the shape or complexity of the Venetian that creates the challenge. It's the massive size. It was a huge learning curve. Um, we'd never dealt with um, something of this scale before. For efficiency, the project is divided into five specific zones. The main podium, housing, the shopping mall and casino. The exhibition centre and theatre. The convention centre and ballrooms. And the 15,000 seat arena. To cap it all off, there will be a hotel tower containing 3,000 luxury suites. And the connections through from the bus depot. The challenge for the architects is how to make all of the different requirements of the Venetian fit under the one roof. To create in just one integrated building what would normally take many. The area of the Venetian Macau is equivalent to 56 soccer fields and is three times larger than the giant Hong Kong airport, a building that took six years to construct double the time frame planned for the Venetian. We started to look in terms of the team structures, and, and once you start to break it down into different elements and you look at it, well, hey, we've done lots of big projects before, so we just treat these as a combination of big projects, and, and we know how to deal with that. But as massive as the Venetian will be, it's nothing compared to what will follow. Adelson's grand plan beyond the Venetian is what's been trademarked the Kotai Strip. Like the famous Strip of Las Vegas, only on steroids and in Macau. There's nobody that would deny that if we had a couple of large helicopters with big, strong slings and we put them under the Strip in Las Vegas, picked up all of Las Vegas, flew it over here, and dropped it somewhere in China or in Asia that it wouldn't work. There's nobody who would ever suggest that. Las Vegas took 70 years to develop. Adelson's Kotai Strip must be built in just five. But this grand vision will rest on the success of one building alone. With a price tag of $2.4 billion, can the Venetian Macau be built? Engineers have only three years to find out.
In 2004, American entrepreneur Sheldon Adelson becomes one of the first foreigners to enter the lucrative Macau gaming industry. Within a five-hour flight from half of the world's population, Macau is the only place in China where casinos are legal, and Adelson Sands Hotel, the largest casino floor on the planet, becomes an instant success. Macau in Chinese means Asia's Las Vegas. But this roll of the dice is nothing compared to what will come. Adelson's next bold move will take the success and risk of the Sands to a totally new level. The gaming floor of Adelson's next project, the Venetian Macau, will be over twice the size of the Sands. The Venetian Macau, which is the next world's largest casino, is a whole new uh, ball game. It really is a, a mega casino. And as massive as that sounds, it will still only account for just 5% of a complex that includes stadiums, hotels, shopping malls, and even three full-scale Venetian-style canals. The trouble is, in already congested Macau, there's simply no land on which to build. Macau's three small islands amount to only 26 square kilometers. The proposal presented to Adelson was anything but straightforward. I went to look at the land, I couldn't find the land. And then I went back and I said, where's the land? I said, it's under the water. I said, oh, okay, uh, how do I get it up? It was a bay. The construction site of the Venetian isn't on one of the islands of Macau. It's between them. In the megabucks world of integrated resorts, the solution to a problem like this is simple. If you can't find any land, you make it. It was a rabbit run of 30-odd trucks just circulating all day, day in, day out, bringing that uh, coarse sand layer in. Steve Daniel is a construction contractor supervising the massive land reclamation needed to build the Venetian Macau. It was wetland, basically it was just wetland marsh. To create land where there isn't any, reclamation teams fill the gap between the main islands of Macau with new earth. Creating one island where there used to be two. But the process isn't as simple as merely dumping new earth. A complex system of layering has to not only fill the area to be reclaimed, but be stable and dry enough to build on as well. The first stage sees three million cubic meters of coarse sand transported by barge from mainland China, mixed with water to form a semi-liquid slurry, then pumped three kilometers to the reclamation site. The new sand layer sits on a bedding of porous marine mud. To create a foundation strong enough to hold the Venetian, they must pump out the water and compress the base layers of mud. They insert special drains vertically into the new earth. Then they dump a temporary heavy layer of sand and dirt on top. The weight from the top layer squeezes the base like a giant sponge. Water is forced out, compacting the reclaimed earth into a functional base. After just six months, Sheldon Adelson has enough land for his vision to start becoming a reality. So what do you think, though? Do you think we've got a good site here? I think we've got a fabulous site. Reclaiming land alone isn't enough to support a building as big and heavy as the Venetian. An elaborate foundation system will have to be driven 
not just into the earth, but into the bedrock below. Matthew Pryor is Vice President of Construction in Macau, charged with turning the vision of one of the world's largest buildings in the shortest amount of time into a reality. Yeah, we, we had a pretty good idea it was going to be tough, but uh, not quite this tough. The elaborate foundations will prove to be one of Matthew's toughest challenges. The bedrock needed for a secure footing in the former bay is a lot deeper than anticipated. If we started at one end and started piling, we were down about 40 or 50 metres, and then as we progressed to the middle, we were going further into the valley, so to speak. We were down to, I think the deepest pile was 84 metres. The depth is so great that in many cases, two or more piles have to be joined together. In total, 13,500 piles will be used. And the footprint of what will soon become the world's largest inhabited building begins to appear. By July 2003, only six months after land reclamation began, preparations are being made to start primary construction. The labor demands of a construction project the size of the Venetian Macau are bordering inconceivable. During peak periods, an army of up to 15,000 workers will be required on site every day. A huge task for a tiny place like Macau. We realized pretty quick that we needed to leverage other industries and resources and, and facilities in the region from Hong Kong and China. Getting such a huge quantity of workers quickly on site is no simple task. To process the workers efficiently and maintain security, management goes high-tech. Special turnstiles with biometric hand readers are installed at all site entrance points. Tracking up to 300,000 staff movements per day. The system monitors the entire workforce and can even be used to assess catering demands. Everything about the construction of the Venetian Macau is aimed towards the deadline. This building must be open for business within two and a half years. But construction alone is only a small part of this monumental endeavor. It's this building's appearance that will make it truly unique. Bringing the style of Renaissance Italy to one of the world's largest and busiest construction sites will be far from easy. By mid-2004, the base layers of the Venetian Macau are complete. Work on the main body of the world's largest inhabited building is well underway. The combination of size and rapid pace is turning the construction site into a massive hive of frenzied activity. Sheldon Adelson's impossible vision rapidly becoming reality. About 100,000 square feet. That's a pretty good sized footprint. The volume of concrete required to build the Venetian is astounding. 200 mixing trucks work in constant rotation, bringing fresh concrete from factories off site to be poured into molds and formwork. For six months, they pour the equivalent of an Olympic-sized swimming pool every day. 
There's 66,000 cubic metres of concrete um, needed at the, at the sands. This one, it was actually pouring a sands every four to five weeks. Not only is the sheer quantity of concrete required breathtaking, the construction site of the Venetian will use 63,000 tonnes of reinforcing steel, 25,000 tonnes of structural steel, and nearly 1,000 kilometres of cables, plus welding gas, tools, water. The list is almost endless. The centerpiece of the Venetian Macau is the 32-storey hotel tower. 3,000 suites of high-end luxury. To meet the strict deadline for opening day, it is essential the construction crews set a pace for the tower that is faster than anything attempted on this scale before. The footprint of the, the hotel, you're doing a floor every four days, which is probably an industry record or somewhere up there. It would be hard to, to beat that because you, you need a, a, a time for the concrete to cure before it gets a certain degree of strength before you can go up to the next floor. Even pushing the extreme limits of construction materials is not enough to keep the project on schedule. Engineers adopt a cunning system to pour concrete off-site as well as on it in a process known as precasting. Because of the speed, we went to a precast concrete system. Um, so we were bringing in very large sections of precast beams uh, and, and installing those on site. Precasting is the most efficient way to build large structures like the Venetian. Much like Lego, the process breaks the building up into smaller segments. These segments, made in massive factories in China, are then trucked to the construction site creating a whole new challenge for management. The challenges with that is you're lifting very, very heavy concrete sections and trying to place those so we have massive craneage that could lift 50 tons. Each prefabricated section can weigh as much as 10 SUVs. Six custom-made 80-meter tower cranes from Denmark access nearly every inch of the Venetian's massive footprint. The cranes are self-erecting, meaning they can grow in height as the building progresses without being dismantled. Day and night, work continues. If the Venetian is to open on time, then there can simply be no break at all in the massive construction effort. Ironically, it's not the size of the Venetian that will be the most eye-catching feature. It's the look. When Adelson purchased the iconic Sands Las Vegas, he gave it a serious makeover. One. In order to create a new $1.5 billion integrated resort. He had a formula, one that would transform Las Vegas, but not a theme. Honeymooning in Venice with his wife, Dr. Miriam Adelson, in 1991, Sheldon Adelson was taken by the romance and history of the famous Italian city. And even for a man as powerful as this, some major business decisions don't always come from where you'd expect. I got all these architects and designers sitting in a room, and uh, we're trying to figure out a theme for this place. And you know, we've been here for two or three days, and nobody really came out with the right one. Her eye was like a laser, and she took her finger, she pointed to the word Venice. So I got to make my wife happy, you know. Every husband has to do that. In 1999, he opened the $1.5 billion Venetian Las Vegas. The world's first integrated resort was an immense success. Its formula will be duplicated, but at three times the size. Will it work in Macau? This is a nice space. 
Bob Flusak is artistic director on The Venetian. So this is a, is a bit bigger, more defined. The man responsible for bringing the ambiance of the famous Italian city to Macau. We'll beef that up a little bit so that it reads more. So that that, like the shape. Bob's experience with mimicking Venice goes back to the original Venetian in Las Vegas. To bring that spirit of Venice, that that opulence, that 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 old world kind of feeling, and try to bring it here and try to bring the spirit of that. The challenge for Bob is to copy on a massive scale, produce it in a massive way. This is the age-old art of, of gilding, putting, applying gold to the surface. And get it done in record time. In Venice, what happened is they, they sculpted this stuff out of wood, um, and they had a lifetime to do it, and we've got uh, a couple months. <laughs> Thousands of Renaissance statues and frescoes will need to be produced by Chinese artisans who have had little exposure or experience of European art. There's no way you're going to duplicate Venice. It took 600 years and lots and lots of money. We didn't have that budget or that time. But we could take s snapshots of it, and we could use a little bit of theatrics, and we pushed certain things a little bit here and there to sort of give you that feeling. By the end of 2006, the elaborate theming is already being applied to the exterior of the giant Venetian Macau. Construction workers and engineers are still racing to finish the main superstructure. And although work is well on track, building in a place like Macau will always have one variable that no amount of planning can prevent. Weather. One year away from opening, and the core of the Venetian structure is nearing completion. Copying Venice in dry Las Vegas is one thing, but doing it three times bigger and in a fraction of the time in wet tropical Macau is another problem entirely. Every year, Macau is hit by an average of 400 millimeters of dense tropical rain during the wet season. For construction workers racing to meet the tightest of deadlines, this sort of variable weather can spell disaster. Because in Vegas, we get like seven inches of rain a year, right? Well, they get seven inches here in a couple minutes. Heavy rain, heat, and intense humidity are just some of the challenges. But Macau also sits squarely in the path of another unwelcome seasonal visitor, typhoons. The vast exterior of the Venetian Macau has to be built to withstand some of the nastiest weather that Mother Nature can throw at it. Everything structurally has to be gorilla here. And I mean off the scale building codes where you have to meet standards that are just monstrous. Stronger steel, more of it, greater structural design. The Venetian Macau isn't just incredibly big. It has been engineered to withstand extreme weather for a very long time. Some of that steel, you could have hung a battleship off of it. That strength would soon be put to the test. In 2006, an intense tropical storm battered the South China coast, fueled by ocean temperatures of up to 26 degrees Celsius. It pounds Macau with up to 120 millimeters of rain in a single day, posing a major threat to construction. The basement complex of the Venetian is below sea level, and within a matter of hours, the downpour floods 25,000 square meters of construction site. We're in a region with, with very high rain uh, and rainwater, so you, you put 
dams up, if you like, to, to create dry areas to work in. You get heavy rainfall, so they fill up, and you've got floods for your forever pumping. But the countdown to the Venetians' opening day can't be stopped merely by rain. To stay on schedule, the basement must be pumped out, and fast. We had about, at one point, about 300 pumps on site, just pumping water out, dewatering. As workers battle getting floodwaters out of the basement, ironically, on the second floor, engineers are working at putting 9,000 tons of water inside. One of the most challenging elements of the Venetian's interior is the construction of three fully functioning canals, each 150 meters long, directly above the largest casino floor in the world. Construction engineer Keith Buckley is overseeing the entire Venetian site. And when it comes to building the canals, there can be no margin for error. They sit above the casino, so the biggest concern is that they don't leak and they don't drip onto the gaming table below. Casinos are all designed to make it as easy as possible for clients to access the main gaming floor. At the Venetian, this means the casino is on the ground floor and the three canals have to be built above. To avoid a disaster in case of an accident or leak in the canals, designers develop a foolproof system of safeguards. Like oil tankers, each canal is made with a double skin. If there's a leak in any canal wall, the water drains into drip trays that are diverted into the main drainage system and not on the customers below. But what good are Venetian-styled canals without Venetian-styled gondolas? This mm. boat that we're building is, what, Paul, about 25 feet? Mm. Teams of skilled craftsmen build 50 scale replicas based on genuine Venetian gondolas. Although designed to look and move just like the real thing, in a place like the Venetian Macau, there's always going to be a few extras. One, two, three, four, five. When the moon hits your eye, like a big beach of mine, Although all of Bob Hlusak's staff are experienced artists, they are all Chinese trained. And it's this factor that poses one of his trickiest obstacles. One of the issues that we had initially was that we found that Asian sculptures sculpt Asians. And that's only natural because when you're learning to sculpt or you're learning to draw, you look in the mirror. You know, or you're drawing, your, you're drawing a hand, you draw your hand. You know, so you find that we have Asian hands, Asian feet. Bob's creative teams have to be retrained doing a crash course in ancient European art to give the world's largest casino complex in Macau the authentic look of 15th century Venice. I've just never seen that Western sort of thing, so it was tougher, and that was a hard part of my job, is trying to, to take that spirit of Venice, that spirit of the, of the Western European architecture and art, and get that in the, in the hearts and souls of the guys working. Through a series of workshops and on-the-spot training, Bob is able to bridge the cultural gaps that remarkably keeps this creative process on track and, above all, on time. Once he's got all the stuff built up. The real heroes are these guys that, that worked on it, and there were so many pieces and so many people that did it. That's one of the key issues on something as big and grand as the Venetian, is that there's so many people that put their hearts and souls into doing this stuff and creating it and creating that vision. Adelson maintains a close eye on every aspect of his Goliath project, but because of the incredibly tight schedule, design plans are a constant work in progress, adapting and evolving as construction moves forward. So what is over here? What's there? In here, this is all the mass gaming floor, and this will be the high limit slots and more of the mass gaming. Every element of the Venetian, inside and out, 
has to be perfect. With a schedule like this, there can be no room for mistakes or delays. Approaching two years of breakneck construction, and with opening day only three months away, the former marshland is now home to one of the largest buildings on the planet. But despite all the hard work, the giant Venetian Macau is still far from complete. Inside, work on the elaborate ceilings continues at feverish pace. Bringing Venice to Macau. In the Grand Canal shops, construction workers add finishing touches, while canals and gondolas undergo the ultimate trial by water. Facilities begin installing and testing the myriad of systems that will run the entire complex. At its heart, the power plant. Getting to it, a little easier said than done. To get to the plant takes a little bit of hiking. For facilities manager Cody Hansen, walking marathon distances is just part of the job. This Cody. It's not uncommon for staff members to walk five kilometers a day and never leave the building. This massive plant generates enough electricity to service 300,000 Hong Kong apartments. It will need to. It's designed to feed not only the Venetian Macau, but every property on Adelson's Kotai Strip. One of the largest air conditioning systems ever built will have to chill down one million square meters of property. In such a humid environment, visitor comfort is key. Equipping the resort for an estimated 100,000 guests is no simple task either. Procurement manager Cecilia Chu has to source 20,000 telephones, 7,000 televisions, container loads of bed linen, furnishings, towels and supplies. These rooms are literally being furnished as the paint dries. Before when Asian come, um, well, they, they only supply very little thing to a small hotel, talking about 200 or 300 rooms. Suddenly, we have a, 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 a giant come here. 12,000 staff will be needed to run the complex. That's 5% of the entire population of Macau. It's one thing to find them, but it's another to train them. Uniforms, catering, access, timetables, everything has to be operational and running perfectly on the day of the opening. At the end, you're sort of mingling with croupiers, learning to, to deal with girls, uh, learning to serve drinks, and uh, everybody's learning uh, and in the middle of this construction site. So that's quite an exciting environment. An average of 80,000 hungry visitors will need to be catered for every day. Hundreds of chefs will staff 30 industrial kitchens capable of pumping out five course banquets for up to 10,000 guests at one time. Every corner of the building must be finished and perfected. Gaming staff are at the ready. Final details refined. The entire massive structure is at fever pitch. The Venetian Macau will soon open its doors, and with crowds already building, there can be no room for a second chance.
In less than three years, the Venetian Macau has grown from quiet island swamp into bustling superstructure. Construction teams have smashed records for speed and precision that defy belief. All of the amazing effort has been aimed at one specific goal. The Venetian Macau is about to open for business. It's showtime. In less than two hours, over 100,000 people will walk through the doors. The army of staff wait nervously for their moment. All right, so they will go up to the stage. All right, those who Three, two, one. The building is an instant success. Sheldon Adelson's bold vision not just paying off, but hitting the jackpot. Absolutely amazing, the, the number of people that came through this building that day. About 130,000 people came in the first 24 hours. It was one of the best natural highs you can imagine. Construction might be complete, but the Venetian Macau will constantly be refined. Las Vegas veteran Alidad Tash is the Venetian strategic marketing manager responsible for making the largest casino floor in the world run like clockwork. We spent a lot of time talking about why the red-themed casino is doing so good. The challenge we had in construction and challenge gaming and all the other areas that I assist with is nothing has ever been done at this scale. Alidad and his team study the returns from every table in the casino, adapting games that have been largely developed in other parts of the world and learning how to make them more appealing to the Venetian's mainly Asian clientele. All the patterns that we're, we're finding right now, this is a world's largest um, casino uh, class, 101. Every day we're learning about this. Even after the official opening, the numbers of people flocking to the Venetian are staggering. One million after less than two weeks. 10 million after just five months. The Venetian Macau isn't just busy, it's packed. But this is only the first stage of a much bigger plan. A plan that's now known as the Kotai Strip. Our intention here is to make Macau the major exhibition and congress venue in all of Asia. It's like we took the best of Las Vegas and the components that were the, the bits that, that, that were obviously successful in terms of arenas and expo and meeting rooms and hotels and retail malls and took all the good parts and then planned it out properly and laid it out. In Kotai, the future isn't just bright. It's neon. It works very, very well, the Venetian, on its own. It's a hugely successful project thus far. But once you then start wrapping another 16,000, 17,000 hotel rooms around it, um, then it becomes a, you know, a, a beast in itself, almost. 20,000 hotel rooms in total, all to be built within six years. The Kotai Strip, when it's up and running, will be about 30% of the power company's consumption for the whole of Macau. Once you have a certain critical mass where all of these properties work together, then it will thrive within itself. Already, the Venetian alone is generating more revenue than the famous strip in Las Vegas. Within five years, Kotai is projected to generate more revenue than the entire US state of Nevada. The most important thing to me is the validation of the concept of the strip. That is the real marvel. 45 or 50 million square feet of stuff built. Sheldon Adelson's determination and ambition have made the impossible possible. In less than three years, 
he created the largest inhabited building on the planet. Rolling the dice and setting a time frame for construction that defied the odds. I can't see it ever being done again, to be honest. Not, not something of that speed, that scale, under very challenging circumstances. Um, it's, it's a successful run. We're very proud of it. Macau has turned a corner from which it will never return. The first stage in one of the boldest construction projects ever conceived. Inspired by the romance of Venice, then refined on the Vegas Strip, the Venetian Macau is already having a dramatic impact on entertainment in Asia. Thank you.